this Bissell sturdy sweep is a great choice for quick pickups and comes complete with dual brushes that rotate in the opposite direction. During operation, there is the lifting of dirt on forward and return motion. And after protracted use, the threading on the handlebar suffers mechanical wear and tear. Suffice to say, it falls apart. The parts where it joins together no longer fastens securely and it literally comes to bits in my hands. And here you can see that the outer outline profile has concaved out as a result of mechanical wear and tear and also as a result of the fabrication of the metal rod being too thin. So this also has a cascading effect in that, you know, the painted screw threads are hardly deep enough to make a secure fit. And as such, the veracity of claim that this is made of durable steel doesn't exactly hold true to an nth degree as during operation both intersecting pieces of the metal rod flounders. So I have retrofitted this allen knot, your standard knot and your allen bolt to provide a rigid connection on both intersecting black rod pieces. We've got three connecting points along the locus of the bissell sweep so I will be replicating the process on two other points okay. So I will be drilling through the threading of this durable steel and, you know, drilling through the other bit that goes on the inside. OK, and that would necessitate me clamping this to prevent movement or play during the drilling process. So first, if you're going to retrofit this fix on this rod, you need to carry out a feasibility or risk assessment, you know, just to see if what you're trying to do is achievable or feasible okay and so these are the connecting pieces that would be latched onto or assembled onto the rod connecting pieces if you have got an outline drawing you can work out the measurements if you haven't you know just perform a visual inspection and just kind of work out you know the operability of the bolts and knots you know once assembled onto the connecting black rod pieces and the reason why you'd have to do this is so that you do not have parts that are surplus to requirements. Also to assess the product integrity of the fabrication. And lastly, a review to ensure that the repair process doesn't lead to the damage of an existing good part. And if you make your observation, you will see that if we drill through both connecting rods and assemble the bolts and knots, there will be no non-conformance with regards to how the bolts and knots are assembled onto both connecting pieces. So I'm happy to proceed with the retrofit process. So I will be clamping both connecting rod pieces on the workbench in situ um, to prevent any play and you know to provide that static that I need um, for the drilling process. So ensure that both connecting rods are clamped at both ends of the workbench. Once both clamps have secured the connecting rod pieces, measure the threading of the connecting rod pieces and take out the threading length center locus. And that's because we will be drilling at the center provenance of 0.5 centimeter. So mark up the center location with a center punch nail so that you remember where to drill through on both connecting pieces with the aid of a measuring tape. And once done, adjoin both connecting pieces and lightly center punch with a hammer and a nail on both the connecting rods. This will enable the centripetal force that we want and negate the centrifugal force or action of the drill whilst drilling through both connecting rods. Suffice to say, it will keep the drill bit centered during the drilling process. The next step would be to select the appropriate drill bit in line with the threading profile of the screw that will be going through both connecting rods. The screw is about 6mm, so I will be selecting a 6mm cobalt drill as my final size. And I will be piloting through them center punched holes with the 2mm, the 3 the 4 or the 5 and 5.5mm um, drill bit sizes. And you can see that the drill bit sizes from 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.5 and 6mm do not extend past the threading profile of the screw. So I do know from this visual inspection that I will be getting a tight fit through both connecting rods. 
if the drill bit is larger than the 6mm threading profile, then you will be getting a loose fit, okay? And in terms of the drill bit selection, I have got a cobalt drill in my hands here, which is used for drilling through metals and, you know, cold rolled steel. Do not use the high speed steel bits or the wood bits to drill through cold rolled steel, steel or metal. Selecting the appropriate drill bit material type is crucial with regards to drilling through steel or metal. So, when drilling 2 mil, 3, 4, 5 and 5.5 mil hole sizes using their respective drill bits, I will be varying the speed to 1. And for 6 mil and above hole sizes, I will be varying the speed to 2. For either of them speeds, I will not be pressing on the trigger at full throttle, okay? Just lightly and hard pressing the drill down at right angles whilst drilling through both connecting rods. So here I am piloting a 2mm hole through both connecting rods. And as the cobalt drill bit bites through both connecting rods, you will begin to see metal chips, you know, from the profile of the connecting rods, you know, spewing away from the metal pieces. So I will be starting off with a 2mm drill bit, which should be able to center on the center punched hole and, you know, prevent, you know, the drill bit from, you know, sliding or pulling away. And from time to time, center punch on the previously center punched hole to get more bite through the drilling process. I will continue to repeat this process until I'm able to drill, drill through both connecting pieces. Whilst hard pressing down at right angles, you know, through the drilling process, you will begin to feel the drill bit bite through the metal and it's going to be making like a squeaking noise. At this point or juncture, it is probable that the hole being drilled through will cave in or give in, okay? So be poised or get ready for the drill bit to bore through the metal or connecting rods. If you aren't getting any bite or traction through them connecting rods, then center punch them holes again, okay? It's not laborious but painstaking, so you just be patient and you will burrow through. So let the drill bit do the work, just apply minimum pressure. And if your drill bit gets quite hot, douse it in cotton fluid. Repeat the center punching process to get more bite bespoke to requirements. And you can see we've finally drilled through both connecting rods. Press the arrowed lever on the drill to get the drill bit out of them connecting rods. Then we can begin to open up the hole size with 3mm, 4mm, 5mm, 5.5mm and up to the final hole size 6mm, okay, with, the, with their respective drill bits. So it's pretty much a repetitive process where we just, you know, swap the drill bits in the chuck of the drill and open up them hole sizes up from about 2 up to about 5.5mm or 6mm, okay. Suffice to say, we are progressively opening up them holes from 3 mil to 4 to 5 and 5.5 and up to the final hole size of 6 mil. okay? So this is the 4 mil drill bit. The 5.5 mil drill bit. This screw is about 6mm and the hole is about 5.5mm so I'm not expecting the um, screw to fit into the hole properly. If the screw were a plug it would be ideal as you would be looking for a snug fit if you're um, trying to get a plug into a tight fit fitted hole. But in this case I will be opening up with a 6mm um, drill bit as I am expecting or would require the screw to seamlessly um, pass through both connecting rods. And here you will see that the 6mm bolt or screw will bolt through both connecting rods seamlessly, okay? And now that we have successfully borrowed through 
one side of the connecting piece we will center punch the other end of the connecting piece so that the drill bit can bite through the connecting piece relatively more easily now there are two ways of borrowing through the underlying side you can flip it over and you know drill through the other side or you could put like a scrap wood bit underneath the connecting piece and drill right through okay this would forestall or help prevent drilling through the workbench or table so place the hardwood plywood scrap piece on the workbench you know secure the connecting rod um, on the hardwood plywood scrap piece and the workbench as well with g clamps the next step of the process would be to drill through the center punched hole onto the scrap piece hardwood plywood visually inspect and centralize the drill onto the center punched hole on the underlying side operate the drill and then drill through center punch as required and then continue drilling at this point you can see that the drill bit depresses into the scrap hardwood plywood bit material so don't drill any further otherwise you drill through the wet bench retract the drill bit you know from the connecting piece flip the connecting rod over and finish off the hole to its final size on the underlying side you can see the hole that's been drilled onto the hardwood plywood so that's a testament that we've been able to navigate through the underlying side of the connecting piece onto the scrap bit material center punch the underlying side and then open up the hole to its final size utilize a plier when necessary to get the center punch nail out of the um, scrap piece material and when i flip the connecting rod over you can see that the center punched hole and the drilled hole has a concave orientation and that's as a result of you know center punch punching through an opened hole or drilled hole as opposed to just center punching lightly on a spot where you would not have this protrusion on one side of the connecting piece so here i will be slaving the underlying side of the connecting piece with a screwdriver whilst i clamp down the connecting rods onto the work bench this will enable the drilling or opening of the underlying sized hole to its final size using a six mil drill bit And also remember to vary the speed from 2 to 1 when drilling with the 6mm drill bit, ok? And then subsequently, hammer down flush the protrusion caused by the centre punch with a hammer so that the allen bolt screws down flush. Run the drill one more time, finish off the hole around its edges and you know ensure that you've got you know a seamless finish around the edges. And then subsequently, assemble the Allen bolt, the Allen knot and the standard knot with a H5 Allen key screw bit or your traditional standard Allen key. Insert your Allen bit into the magnetic bit holder and then into the chock of the drill to screw down the Allen bolt through the standard knot into the Allen knot. So we're just going to replicate, repeat or reproduce the torque tightening process in the first assembled connecting rod position onto the second connecting rod position, which is what we've got here. So hand tighten the standard knot onto the Allen bolt and then subsequently hand tighten or torque tighten the Allen knot onto the Allen bolt. You can then finish off the torque tightening process with your Allen drill bit or your standard traditional Allen key. And once you've managed to assemble all the bolts and knots on all the three connecting rods connection points, the connecting rods functionality should be fully restored, thus allowing you to clean dirt off on most household surfaces. Replicate the entire process on the black connecting rods third connection point. And as you can see, they have been retrofitted on all three points. That first position being a solid screwing position, whilst the rest of them three are hollow screwing positions, okay? And that's about it really. If you found the information useful, don't forget to subscribe, like and share, help the channel grow, and hopefully catch up with you later. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Goodbye.